15 minutes ago. So uh, I just had a quick shower because I was so sweaty, but I'm extremely hot. You know how you get when you just get off Zwift. It's very hot. So that's how I'm feeling right now. But actually, I'm really pumped to be able to talk about uh, mountain bike training because that's, that's what I do, uh, mountain bike stuff. So thanks, Jacob, for inviting me along. And actually, I have a real soft spot in my heart for Palmerston North and the Manawatu Mountain Bike Club, having lived in Palmy for eight years, which uh, that was a long time. And I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. Now I'm in Rotorua, and I'm still focused on mountain bike things as I'll talk about in a minute, but uh, definitely I loved riding in Palmy. I loved my time living there, and I always told everyone how great it was to live there, and they thought it was funny how much I loved Palmy, but I did, but we're in Rotorua now, and uh, definitely enjoying Rotorua as well. We're like two minutes away from uh, Box of Birds, which is one of my favorite trails, and uh, you know, it's two minutes home, so it's, it's easy as, and you just get in a pretty good ride on one of the best trails, and then you're home, so can't beat the access for sure. So I'm recording this now and I'll uh, hopefully share this with other people, but this is made just for you guys at the Minnewatu Mountain Bike Club. I made it today and I've been thinking about it for a while, what I'm gonna talk about. But I called it six key elements of mountain bike training. Cause I think there's a few things that we can talk about that you can just think about, little things, uh, as you prepare for mountain bike races or rides or you know just a big summer of getting amongst it. Um, Mountain biking is hard. I see someone else is trying to get in, but I can't find them. Uh, I heard it. I'm not sure. Hopefully they can get in. It didn't pop up. Uh, but mountain biking is hard and we don't want to make it harder on ourselves uh, than it is. So uh, there's a few things that we can do to make our, give us a, a really good summer of riding. Got multiple screens going on here. So here we go. Here's an outline of what we'll talk about. I'll keep it kind of short because uh, my preference is for you to ask questions, whether you're preparing for the Waka or a 2W Enduro. So we'll answer whatever questions you have. And if you have a question, probably someone else has the same one. So please ask away. So a uh, little, I'll go a little bit about me and, and myself and the riders that I work with, because you probably know a lot of them. Uh, my approach to training, because uh, I've, I've uh, trained in all different kinds of ways, and I have a pretty set approach that I use with all mountain bikers now. I have six key training elements that we'll talk about. I'll also give you some workout ideas along the way, so you'll be able to jot those down and take them away and try them next week. And then we'll also give you uh, this, this a skill session that I like to, to share as well. So, can't tell if my hair is messed up or not, but... Uh... I'm just out of the shower. So uh, why why am I talking about mountain biking? I grew up in the family bike shop. So all, I knew bikes from the day I was born. And this was in the USA. Uh, my grandpa started the shop. My dad bought the shop. And then I worked there until I moved to New Zealand. So I moved to New Zealand in 2014. Been here ever since. I, I actually started riding late when I was 14, but I took to it really quickly. And by 16, I was racing. And then by 2010, I had formed uh, an East Coast semi-pro team sponsored by Giant. So we got to travel around quite a bit racing and we got, had all the sweet bikes and we got to try new stuff. And that was a really good time. So there's spraying a bit of champagne. And actually, I'm not even sure if it's champagne. It might be grape juice, which they do as a little bit of a thing when you can't buy champagne on a Sunday, which is pretty common. But uh, eventually, I just started coaching because I did so many things wrong. I did everything wrong in the book. I had chronic fatigue that I developed in 2007 and 2008, and that really dug a hole. And I almost didn't get back on the bike. But coming back from that, I learned a lot. So I started coaching athletes. And the first athlete that I coached was Seamus Powell, who raced uh, on the Giant Factory team, and he became a five times USA champ. And he was he was at a crossroads, and he was really willing to learn new things and try new things because he was digging himself a hole as well. But he came around and he raced on Giant and then he raced on KHS factory team. And uh, he only just retired last year. Uh, but during that time, I moved to New Zealand and I worked at Massey University and I was a lecturer there in sports science. And at that time, I did a PhD and we measured braking. So we were the first ones to ever measure, measure braking in mountain biking. And it was really lucky because you can't really study mountain biking at a university anywhere else in the world, really. 
except uh, at Massey. We got pretty lucky being able to do that. I worked with Steve Stannard and Paul McDermott and Phil Fink, and we did some cool stuff. Uh, now what I do is uh, I left the university in 2019, and I work as a consultant for companies like Training Peaks and SRAM and others, and I uh, offer educational content, and I work with athletes. Some of the other athletes I work with, some you might know from Palmerston North, Caleb Botcher, he's been doing great on the World Cup and as his first year like actually doing the World Cups. He just had an 11th at Mont Saint Anne, so he was really pumped on that. And another rider from New Zealand, Win Masters. So he obviously had a great ride at uh, Snowshoe, top 20. So they're very different sports, but uh, we actually follow very similar approaches for both of them, which is most people wouldn't believe. Uh, so probably the thing that I do most of the time is I, I started this company called Brake Ace, and it's the first mountain bike brake sensor. So there's all kinds of ways to measure things on mountain bikes, and there was no way to measure braking. So since I had studied that for so long, I figured, well, now we have to make a stinking sensor and start a company. So we've been working on that, and it's coming along real nicely. And actually, I don't have one here. It's on my other desk, but uh, we got some prototypes here, and that uh, I've been testing them, not this week because it's raining so much. But I've been trying some new things, and that's really exciting. That's what I spend most of my time on, and looking forward to getting riders on those. Wrong one. So my approach to training, I, I really, really do keep it basic, and I think most people would be surprised how basic it is. So firstly, it has to be fun. It has to be fun, because if it's not fun, you're not going to do it. It doesn't mean it's fun all the time, but it has to be fun overall. If you hate it, you're not going to do it. So it has to be fun. Uh, the other real key element is that aerobic fitness is number one. Aerobic fitness is number one, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, when we and we know when we go out mountain biking, it's it's pretty hard. But so your, tr your training should actually look a little bit different than what it would look like when you're normally riding. So you want to when we're training, we're working on our weaknesses. We're working on our weaknesses when we're training. And I really believe that there there is a time to go hard. But the, there really is a time to go easy, and that's most of the time, to take it easy. And that's, that's what I'll talk about next. So th that's, that's really, those are the basics. Those are the basics. And if you, you can nail those things, and you can consistently nail those things, you can continue to improve. So these are my six key training elements. I actually put them in order. Um, but then I got to number six. And I was like, actually, that's really important too. So I gave it a number one also. So easy riding is number one. Threshold riding is number two. Pacing is number three. And you can read them, but I put recovery down there at the bottom. I was like, actually, well, you need it, but sometimes we get enough of it. But you can recover wrong, I think, and uh, there is a right way to recover. So I gave that a number one because everyone needs recovery, and I don't want to undermine the importance of it. All right, so number one of the six key elements of training is easy riding. So if you get really, really good at riding easy, that means you're developing aerobically. You can burn fat really well, and you, can, you just have an engine. You have an engine. And if you have a real good engine, you can sprint more times. And we know that's exactly what mountain biking is. You go hard, and then you coast. You go hard, and then you coast. But you have to do it over and over and over and over and over. Hundreds of times, hundreds of times. Uh, but if you can get really good at riding easy, you can recover faster in between those hard efforts. And that's the, the best thing that you can do is recover faster between those efforts. So if you recover faster, you can go harder the next time. And that's really important for when it comes time to race. Uh, and so we know that mountain biking isn't easy. So we need to be careful every time we go mountain biking that we're not kind of pretending that it's easy because it's not really kind of ever easy. And I was trying to remember what the trail was called uh, at Arapuki. And it's the new climbing trail. And I can't, it's, uh, it's not the easy up one, but it's the other one. Um, back, back trick? No, the other one. What's the other one? The harder one. The hard climbing trail that starts at the bottom of Chewbacca. The bends. The bends, is it? Okay, yeah, that one is hard, right? That one is hard. Uh, 
And, you know, even uh, the easy up trail, it's called easy. But actually, if you try and ride easy, you still got to pedal hard sometimes, right? So it's not actually easy all the time. So if you think about what we want to do, and one of the primary things we want to do is sometimes we want to ride easy. The only way to really do that is on the road, unfortunately. I think we're lucky actually in Palmerston North where we have incredible road riding and really good access to road riding. So I would encourage you to try once in a while, right? Because it's really, really good for your mountain bike training. So try this one, a two hour easy road ride. And easy means easy, and that's the important part. So you have to be able to hold a conversation the entire time, right? So we've all ridden with people where, usually this is how it goes, right? You start a ride from, uh, from the car park at the end of the road, and you start climbing up and everyone's chatting. And eventually someone starts to get tired or someone starts pushing the pace and eventually everyone just stops talking. Have you been on a ride where that has happened? Because that's how it normally goes and that's when everyone just starts pushing a little bit too hard. That's not easy anymore. So what, what happens then is we start digging a little deep and uh, we're using different, different kinds of substrates for fuel is actually what ends up happening. So we want to be able to stay, if we can stay on the road, we can actually ride easy and that'd be really beneficial for you if you do it once or twice a week, right? Apart from your, your mountain biking. So just make sure you're riding easy and don't half wheel your mates because then you end up racing each other and that's not an easy ride anymore. So Caleb will tell you, uh, he spends most of his time riding easy. And if you've ever raced against Caleb at the winter series, you'll know that he's very fast and he doesn't go hard that often. He spends a lot of time going easy. And you might see him riding to and from the races, but he, he spends a lot of time riding and most of it's easy. So the other, the, the second thing that you can add to your, to your training is some threshold riding. And there's like, there's a zillion ways you can define threshold, but we think about this as if you go up like a long gravel climb, like zigzag road. So you know zigzag road and if you like put it in the easiest gear and you kind of grind up uh, zigzag road or even backtrack you can kind of cruise right and you can go like kind of hard but not digging deep and that's a really nice pace to be able to go so if you can get really good at riding threshold this is your highest level of aerobic uh, power production so that is where we really start to see differences in recovering between these hard efforts so if you can go and you can do backtrack two times and you just ride at your 90% of your effort, that's a really good workout. So it might take you 15, 20 minutes. I think uh, the Strava uh, crown is like maybe 11 minutes. Don't go that fast because that'd be a hard ride, right? You're not going to get your crown at 90%. That's really important. But uh, two times up that and 90% of your best, that's a really good workout. So you'll finish that workout. You'll be tired, but you're not going to be totally smoked. And that's actually really important because then we can ride again, right? The next day and we're not totally gassed because if we ride too hard too much, we get totally gassed and then we can't continue training and we need a really long break. So this threshold kind of pace and like we could really get into the, the weeds and how we measure it with heart rate or perceived exertion or even power, uh, which I really like power meters. Like I think they're great, but uh, just think about 90%. 90% of the, the best effort that you've ever done and then kind of ride at that pace twice and you'll you'll see some definite improvements. Do that once a week. All right, the other important thing is pacing and I think this is where we most of us get it wrong. So uh, I like the way, and this is crazy to me, the way we start mountain bike races is like we're racing against Usain Bolt. Right, we get to uh, the the start line, and suddenly everyone rides like they're doing a hundred meter sprint. Now that's cool if we're doing a hundred meter race, but we're not. We're usually racing for like an hour and a half or longer, right? At the Sizzler, which would have been, I think that was five hours, right? And everyone would have started very hard. Now I know what I felt like the last time I sprinted for a hundred meters, when I was running to the donut shop, and I felt tired for hours, right? It takes a lot out of you when you go as hard as you can. So we need to think about mountain bike racing more like a 5K or a marathon. And if we start at a steady pace, we can actually maintain it and probably perform better. And the great thing is it doesn't hurt as much. It's really hard to do, obviously, because we need to jostle for position. And we don't want someone getting in front of us when we're trying to uh, 
do a technical part of a trail. So we do need to fight for those those kind of positions. And we don't want to go too easy, but we really need to find that happy medium. So the races are long. The races are long. They're an hour plus. Okay. And as we get tired, we start to make mistakes. And we've all been there. We know when we start to dig a little bit too deep and then we crash. And then we're very uh, flustered by this crash. So we jump back on our bikes. We go as hard as we can again to try and make up time. And then we crash again. And it becomes this vicious cycle where you're crashing because you're tired. And one of the ways we can get around that is by just taking a little bit easier at the start and saving a little bit of gas in the tank for later on. So you can try this. So try one of the XC loops at the top of Arapuki and do it two times. So do one of them all out. So go as hard as you can, like you're starting an XC race and do the other one steady. So start pretty steady and go at about 90% the whole time. Compare your times on different parts of that track. And what you'll probably find is that uh, they're very similar. They're very similar. And if you think about what you'll have to do is you'll have to do laps multiple times if you're doing XC. And, or, you know, even if you're doing a one lap race, it's just long with one lap. But it's a really good lesson to take forward uh, when you get to races, especially if you're doing the Waka, right? So the Waka takes a long time and that one starts really hard. And I don't think it's necessary to start that hard, especially if you know you're going to be out there for a really long time. Start steady. And it's hard to do. It's still hard for me to do, even though I know that it's the best way to do it. Sometimes I get a bit caught up starting hard. But if you try it and you test it in your training, you'll get confident with that approach. And that's really important to do because if you're confident to do it, you'll stick with it. You can also try this on downhills. So we do this a lot with gravity riders. So I don't want to overlook gravity riders, but this is really important because we all know Aaron Gwynn's World Cup race run where he won without a chain. So he wasn't tired, right? And that's why he was able to ride downhill really, really fast. And I mean, he was probably a little bit tired, but he wasn't sprinting unnecessarily. So there's a lot to do there with, with braking and energy output, and you can really optimize both of those. And he really nailed it that time, and he won a World Cup with no chain, didn't pedal once. So try that for your uh, enduro race. Don't start off too hard. Don't sprint too hard up the hills. You know, you got another five stages. And the same for downhill as well. So that kind of leads to this one, which is skills. And I put a butterfly up there because... In mountain biking, you kind of want to float like a butterfly. And if you can ride really smooth, you take less abuse. And if you take less abuse, you get less tired. So it becomes this other vicious cycle where we want to hold on to the skills that we have and we want to execute things properly. And if we get tired, we can't really do that. So we should spend time working on our skills. And we know that the, the young riders out there, they do this a lot. The young riders will go out to the trails and they'll just session the same jumps or the same corners multiple times with the homies and they'll just see who can ride it the fastest or the hardest or go the biggest. And what we also know is that young riders are all getting really good. They're really, really skilled and they can execute these skills really well. And that's one of the things that I think we miss out on as we get older is we've, we just want to get out there and ride and do a loop. Right, at least I do. I don't want to be stopping to session different sections. But if you can do that, I th you'll learn something and you'll be able to ride faster and more confidently in those sections. So that's really important uh, to be able to do because if you can ride smoother, you'll save that energy that you need uh, for later on. And don't forget, there's uphill skills and there's downhill skills. I know at Arapuki, we have some tricky uphills. And if you're in a race like the Arapuki Classic and you get to that real tight, uh, there's this rock that you need to pop over and then it makes a hard right turn. I can't remember what trail it was, but I know that if I just calm down a little bit heading into that rock and I made it over the rock smoothly, I didn't waste time kind of falling off my bike. So I went to that uphill section and I practiced it multiple times just to make sure I could get it because I knew if I had to get off my bike that would take a really long time and that would cost a lot of time. So uphill skills and downhill skills and it's really good to be able to practice those. I think actually this is where uh, this is what we're doing with break ace is we're we're saying well actually the trail is big and long 
and there's like you break like a hundred times. How do we know where to get better? Well, this is what Break Ace does, and Break Ace picks through that for you and tells you this is where you should go. It gives you the low hanging fruit of where you should go to to work on your skills, and it shows you where those are on the map. This is, I think it's a really important thing, whether we're riding uphill, whether we're riding downhill, XC, gravity, everything. So you can try this uh, with just your phone, right? So have a friend take a video of you on a tricky part of the trail that you always mess up. And look at your form. How is your form? How are you executing this? And then go back to that uh, same section, maybe by yourself. Or if, if it's too tricky, bring someone and have them look at you and, you know, work through different ways to get through this. Try new things. Try new things. And eventually, um, I think you have, uh, I think Bryn's coming around to do some stuff with the club. Bryn Dickerson, and he's he's a great skills coach, and he'll he'll definitely give you some things to work on. I see I have a spelling mistake up there. But yeah, skills are very important. And uh, I did put this purposely after fitness uh, because you got to be fit first to be able to execute these skills. And that's why I put skills after it. Obviously, mountain biking is a skill sport, but if you get too tired, you'll never even get a chance to use your skills. So you need to be fit first. All right, I know you have a, a strength session coming up but next week or the week after, um, I, I put strength down here purposely. So strength is important. Strength is important. But I think being able to pedal up the hill is probably ranks higher, right? We need to get up to the top of the hill. But one of the things that I think about, because I'm always standing here at my desk on the computer uh, all day, and I think, when is the last time I did this with my arms? And if you think about when the last time you did this with your arms is raise them over your head, uh, I think we find ourselves in a position as we get older where we don't do that much. So this is what strength training is really good for because strength training gets you to move in all these ways that you never move because we have all these muscle fibers in our body that we just never use. They just kind of are laying there dormant. So when we get to do strength training, the first thing that happens is we start to be able to re recruit those muscles. That's the very first thing that happens. You don't get bigger muscle fibers. You don't get stronger muscle fibers. You just use more of the muscle fibers that you have. And it's really good to be able to do. So you can get carried away with strength training, I think. For us mountain bikers, I think the most important strength workout is the one that you do. Uh, because generally, mountain bikers just want to go out and ride trails. And strength training sometimes seems like something as like an add-on. Now, whether I'm working with an XC athlete or with a downhill athlete, we're, we're in the gym every week for every kind of athlete, even the XC racers in the gym every week, twice a week. And we're doing really, uh, really hard gym workouts, really hard gym workouts. But it takes a long time to build up to doing really heavy strength. So search this one on Google, search the MTB PhD home circuit. So this is one that uh it's caleb doing the video and he's they're all body weight exercises you can do them at home it takes 30 minutes if you don't want to do the whole thing just do one circuit it takes 10 minutes and if you do that twice a week that's a really good place to start so the most the best strength workout is the one that you do so if you can do 10 minutes and that's all you can do that's perfect so try that and uh you i like dynamic movements uh, I don't like doing too much with machines, like uh, squats are great, uh, shoulder presses are great, rows are great, those kind of things. There's lots that we could do. So the, most, the best one is the one that you do. All right, and the last one is recovery. I forgot to change the number on this one, but uh, it's impossible for mountain bike rides to be a recovery ride, they're just too hard. The, the amount of times that our power production goes over uh, a recovery pace is too much. So they're generally, they just can't be recovery ride. A recovery ride's more um, riding around on the, the bridle path. That's a recovery ride where you're just kind of moving the muscles and pumping the blood around. If you don't get Strava medals on recovery rides, it's impossible because a recovery ride needs to be easy. But also, uh, I think for most people, doing an actual recovery ride is not necessary. 
maybe more sleep is better. And remember, we need to sleep. We need to sleep every night and we need to sleep, sleep uh, six to eight hours uh, at a minimum every night. And then uh, I think as we get busier, that's one of the first things to go. And sleeping is when our muscles actually recover because growth hormone is released while we're sleeping. And that's the only time it's released. So you need your sleep six to eight hours. Um, and the, the pros are sleeping way more than that. The pros are sleeping 10 to 12 hours a night. And they know that that's when their recovery, uh, their real recovery is really happening. So along with this, like recovery is actually really multidimensional. I would say don't go too hard too often. And that is also another way to think of recovery. So you need um, two to three days a week uh, over easy pace. And what I mean by that is you could have two or three days per week that are like kind of hard, kind of hard. And generally, if we think about going really hard and digging deep, once a week. Limit that to once a week. And the others should probably be at that threshold pace and the rest of them nice and easy. So the best way that you can focus on recovery is actually setting a plan. So these are the days that I'm, this is the day I'm going to ride hard. This is the day I'm going out with mates and we're going to work on our skills. This is the day I'm going to ride easy. And if it's a rest day, I'm going to rest. So if you make a plan, and it can be as basic as, just make a, the most basic plan. Like this is what I'm going to do and uh, stick with it. You probably see some, some improvement if you kind of focus on these elements that we talked about and you get them in on your, on your preparation for the Waka or any other event. So as a review for the six key elements of mountain bike training, don't always dig deep. If you don't dig deep, you can ride more. So that's great. And that's a great way to get faster. So if you pace smarter, you can definitely ride faster. Uh, measuring your braking is a great way to improve your skills. That's just a quick plug for brake ace coming soon. And uh, plan in recovery and stick with that plan. So just make a plan, a basic plan. If you need my help, let me know and stick with it and see what you can do. Because if you stick with that plan, you, you will see the results that you're looking for. So that's it. So thanks for uh, thanks for listening to the mountain bikes chat. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer some questions. Yeah. Can you